In this video, I want to talk about what happens when the fluids flow. So the flow of fluids can be mainly classified into steady flow and turbulent flow. Let's understand what is steady flow. I have drawn a cross section of a pipe here and through this pipe there is some fluid that is flowing. Let's consider a point A. Now the fluid particles that reach point A, suppose a particle reaches point A with some velocity, let's assume in this direction. Then the interesting thing is that all the particles that will reach this point A will have the same speed and same direction. That's what's interesting about this steady flow. Now let's assume that this particle which reached A reached some other point B sometime later and it has some velocity now. Now this velocity can be different from what velocity it had before. I'm not saying that velocity must remain constant. But if it has some velocity when it reaches B, then all the particles that reached A will also reach B with the same speed and same direction. So this is something like in the schools when the assembly used to happen, then the gathering when the classes used to come one by one in a queue, that you can imagine as steady flow. It is a very orderly movement of fluid particles. And during recess when there was a lot of chaos, uh, students running here and there, that flow is what we will see as turbulent flow. So in this case, in the steady flow case, uh, we, we can join all the points where the particles that reach A or B are following and then we can draw a, a kind of a trajectory for these particles. And similarly, we can do so for other particles. So in this case, it will look something like this. These lines, which are the lines of flow, which the particles are following as a trajectory, are called as streamlines. So these lines are called as streamlines. Streamlines. And this tube in which uh, it, they are contained, this flow is called as tube of flow. Tube of flow. So two interesting terminologies here, streamlines and tube of flow. To the contrary, turbulent flow is a flow where the particles are not moving in an orderly fashion. So in that case, there's a lot of intermixing and uh, there's no guarantee that the particle that are reaching A will have to follow the same speed and same direction and they can crisscross. And this motion can be a little complicated. So imagine in a waterfall, when the water is falling from a height, that flow, when the water reaches and collides fiercely with the bottom, that flow can be imagined as turbulent flow. So turbulent flow is a complex flow and steady flow is a very orderly flow. Next, we want to understand something called as equation of continuity. Now, before proceeding to this, I want to clarify a few things about the fluids that are taken into the picture. So we are only going to study those fluids which are incompressible. Incompressibility just means that the density of the fluid is constant throughout and it doesn't change. That is the assumption of incompressibility. Also the fluids must be non-viscous. So in our discussion, we'll assume that uh, there, there is no friction between the layers of fluid. So one layer of fluid while flowing doesn't drag along the other layer in contact with it. So imagine something like the flow of honey and the flow of water. They both are different in the sense that honey when flows, flows very slowly if you would have seen. So when you are trying to take out honey from the container, then you notice that you have to hold for long and uh, make sure that the gravity is, uh, gravity is doing its work. And the honey comes out in a very thick and in a very slow manner. So it means that there is a lot of friction between the layers of honey. But in the case of water, water flows rather easily. So we'll say that honey is more viscous than water. So in this case, our assumption will be that the layers of liquid uh, do not apply any tangential force to the layers in contact with it. So no friction. And also we want the fluid to flow at a low speed because what happens when the fluid flow at a low speed, then the flow is steady. So it is comparatively easier to figure out the mathematics behind steady flow. 
and if the flow speed increases then the flow becomes really turbulent so therefore we don't want to cross that boundary we just want to uh, be under the limits of feasibility therefore we'll assume that the fluid is incompressible non viscous and flowing at a low speed inside a tube so the equation of continuity is a rather intuitive equation uh, it just says that the flow rate in a pipe of variable cross section must be same in any cross section of the pipe so this simply means that the flow rate in this section of the pipe will be equal to the flow rate in this section of the pipe so flow rate by definition is defined as volume of liquid flowing per unit time so the si unit will be meter cube per second so how much amount of fluid flows in each second through any cross section of the pipe must remain constant and that's because the fluid is incompressible and the pipe is enclosed so the fluid can't escape the pipe and the extra fluid can't come into into the pipe so this equation is just law of conservation of mass that the mass of liquid flowing in each second must be same in any cross section of the pipe so to figure out the mathematics let's assume that this area is a1 and this area is a2 the fluid is flowing with velocity v1 in this part and with v2 in this part so let's imagine that at some time t one layer of liquid is like this and in amount of time interval delta t it will move by a distance of v1 delta t because speed is equal to distance upon time distance is speed into time so let's assume that this layer which was at 1 moved point 2 and this distance will be equal to v1 delta t at the same time at the same instant we'll assume one layer this one 1 dash and after the same time delta t this layer would have moved to some other distance 2 dash and again this distance is going to be v2 delta t now if we try to imagine that how much amount of liquid is contained in this section of the pipe this much volume of this section volume of this section is a1 v1 delta t and volume of this section v2 is a2 delta t into v2 and they both must be equal because that is the same volume covered in the same interval of time a1 v1 delta t must be equal to a2 v2 delta t and delta t delta t gets cancelled out and we get a1 v1 equals to a2 v2 v2 and this is our equation of continuity which simplifies a lot of things